Hey guys, today we're going to talk about why I chose a Ram 1500 Laramie, and it was a pretty big decision because I've committed to this truck for three years, which is longer than I've owned any of my cars ever. The R7 lasted barely one year, the R8 didn't even make it to a year, the S4 was just over two years, I was two years and a Mustang was like half a year. So I've got five main reasons why I thought a lot about it. For my first time ever owning a truck, I chose the Ram 1500 Laramie. We'll go through my five main reasons for choosing a Ram 1500 and also show you some of the highlights and my favorite features of this truck. So the first main reason, the biggest reason is space and practicality and they tie together. Space is in terms of the cargo space, passenger space. And the reason why cargo space is important is I film YouTube videos. You know that because you're watching this video right now. And the R7 was great. It was very, very practical, a big hatchback. but. Honestly, when I had Colin with me when we were out filming and we had all our Pelican cases, all our tripods, all the camera stuff, the R7 was actually kind of full. Like it, we were putting stuff onto the seats and the front seats and the footwells. This truck no longer has an issue and I'll show you guys right now. So obviously I have the crew cab, so the full size cabin. And in the back right now, I just have all my, a lot of my camera gear. There's still some inside, but a backpack, there's batteries, some audio stuff in here and these cases. Um, there's some water bottles and a little cooler bag. That is some microphones and audio recorder. I've got tripod and uh, slider stuff on, in bags here on the back seat. And then if we run around to the other side, I'll get to the bed in a second. I've got more stuff. I've got, this is the main Pelican case filled with GoPros, cameras, um, memory cards, lenses. So that sits right in there. Uh, you can see I've got this giant robust triple suction mount that I was just testing out some stuff for. There is a lot of stuff that I need when I film and I keep buying more and more. So no, I'm not going to Home Depot every day and building myself a house, but the practicality of cargo capacity of this truck has definitely been a good thing. And I'm, I'm really excited to be able to take advantage of it. In the back, I've got, I mean, bucket of detailing supplies, more random stuff there, water. Um, that's all detailing towels and another really big Pelican case. So this thing is huge and would eat up half the RS7's cargo capacity and it barely even makes a dent any pickup bed so got more stuff in the pelican case there additionally the space aspect i'm a taller guy i'm 6'3 um in the truck of this size i feel very comfortable hop in i've got tons of headroom leg room i can put so many there's cup holders everywhere so i've got water bottles there if you've got storage for my phone here there's a wireless charging pad for the iphone um these move out like that tons of space for a lot of stuff. So practicality is very, very high in the list of things that I wanted for my daily driver and film vehicle. And then the other big thing is practicality in terms of ability to handle different road conditions and driving surfaces. The RS7, I've highlighted this a couple times, uh, is great. Air suspension is comfortable, but it rides on very big wheels. 21 inch is the upgraded type that I had on my car. You can go down the 20s and those will clear the brakes. So I downsized, but even then your tires don't have much sidewall. My truck is running 22s and I have way more sidewall. So it'll handle potholes, crappy roads, cracks in the road, whatever you throw at it without much of an issue. And then in addition, I added the wheel and tire package onto this thing. So if I do happen to damage a tire or a wheel or something and happens, it is covered by that package through Mopar. So that's, that's something pretty big. I've spent, uh, I had four sets of tires for the RS7 and two sets of wheels. It's a lot of money you put into the things that make your car roll. Um, so that's another thing that this truck has as an advantage and it mattered to me. And that's why I chose this thing. Number two is the air suspension. This truck has air suspension, adjustable height. Uh, let me get in the truck real quick. I'll show you guys. You can pick between all the settings with this one right here, this little toggle. You can see it lights up there. We're currently in uh, just regular aerodynamic mode, I think. I can drop it all the way down. Whoop, the doors are open, so it won't do it. It will not change heights with that. But I can drop it all the way down or raise it all the way up, which is definitely great. So air suspension, adjustable height, but also it rides pretty nice. It's cushy, it's comfortable. And for filming, I am really, really hoping that I can take advantage of that and get nice smooth rollers. So, I was just testing out some stuff today by um, putting a gimbal on the side of the truck. It worked okay-ish. I'm still testing uh, trial and error, trying to figure out the best way to do it. But I firmly think that I will be able to turn this into something that will film really nice, smooth rolling shots for YouTube. Get nice cinematic B-roll. So that's something I wanted. From a comfort standpoint, air suspension is excellent. 
look at all the luxury cars. You get air suspension in them because it is more comfortable. Yeah, body roll is a thing, but I don't really care. It's a truck. It, it's like a 6,000-pound truck. I don't care about body roll. The next question that a lot of people asked me was like, why did you choose a Ram? Why didn't you get a Raptor? Raptor was the most frequently brought up one because it is probably one of the most popular and badass trucks to the kind of general public, especially as an enthusiast. I thought about it. I really did consider it. A couple friends of mine own Raptors. I've driven them extensively. Back when I used to work at Ford Performance, I spent a couple days doing tests on Raptors. Um, and they're great. They're huge. They are very capable but to be 100% honest, even though I do say that our roads approximate the surface of the moon, I don't have a desert around here to go use a Baja truck. And it's not quite as comfortable as something as a Ram. And I decided that um, I didn't need the total over-the-top performance and off-road ability of the Raptor that I wasn't going to fully exploit all the time. I'd rather go for the luxurious, tech-filled, nicer interior, on-road-oriented truck that the Ram 1500 Laramie presents. Now compared to the Silverado, the Tundra, the regular F-150, the Nissan Titan, any of them, the Ram destroys every single one of their trim levels in terms of luxury and tech. It wins hands down. Across, everybody who's driven them can agree with that. The material finish on the inside, the giant Uconnect touchscreen of the very crisp uh, infotainment system, the cameras, the sound system, uh, if you may have upgraded Harman Kardon in this car, er, in this truck, it's just so nice. It's a luxury car experience in a pickup truck, and I enjoy that. I, I value good interior materials. I enjoy being in a nice interior when I'm driving. It's comfortable. The seats are comfortable. The trimmings are nice. It has all the tech and luxury toys you'll want, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. That made the Ram a clear front runner to me, and I just felt it was a better fit than the other trucks out there. Did I think about some SUVs? Absolutely. Um, Grand Cherokees are very nice. I mean, not a track hawk because that's a little too expensive for what I was looking for. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in a second. Uh, but maybe a Grand Cherokee SRT, Ford Explorer, that type of thing. Nah, I thought about it, but I figured I'd try the utility of a truck, the full out over the topness of the fact that, I mean, it's a pickup truck. Now I can be fully American. I was born in America and I grew up in Michigan. So a lot of people had trucks, but this is my first time owning a pickup truck. My friends are joking that I'll be all redneck now. So we'll see. Oh yeah, the other thing that we have to fully disclose and a big reason why I chose the Ram is I got a really, really good deal on this. Sticker price for this was almost $70,000, like six, 68 something or something. I put like 20 grand in options on this truck because I just went, I want to check all these boxes. I couldn't find one that matched everything I wanted. I needed air suspension. I wanted the Adapt Advanced Safety System. I wanted the Uconnect. I wanted this and this and that. I wanted the giant panoramic sunroof. And we could not find a truck that matched that base criteria that I needed. So my dealership sales guy was just like, let's just order one. I'm like, how long does that take? And he goes, a couple weeks. And it was built. And it showed up to my spec exactly how I want it with my name on the window sticker, which is cool. But then I also got a hefty, hefty discount, essentially employee pricing on this truck, which made it extremely advantageous to pick up. Um, I decided not to buy it. There was a 0% for 84-month financing that was being offered, but that eliminated a lot of the rebates that I had stacked on this truck. So leasing it made perfect sense. I know I'm not going to keep it for like a decade. I just don't do that with vehicles um, the way I use them and go through them. Three-year, 36,000 miles total, so 12,000 miles per year. Zero dollars down, nothing out of pocket, everything rolled into the lease. Uh, five sixty-five a month is my payment, which I'm happy with. That's that's brilliant for me. And my target was five hundred a month for this type of vehicle. What I was going to put for, um, and it went over a little bit, but eh, that's fine. And then the last thing. The whole reason why I wanted to get rid of the RS7 and get something else, which ended up being a truck, is I want a sports car again. I want I want to own a sports car. I want to own a manual car. I can't tell you guys how much I miss having a manual transition car, something possibly more exotic, possibly mid-engine, more sporty, performance-oriented. The R7 is great, but at the end of the day, it's a big luxury yacht. It's it's huge. It's pretty heavy. It's very, very fast. But it doesn't give you the same feeling as driving even something like an M3 would give you or something, a sporty coupe. And that's what I wanted. So getting rid of that into a more affordable daily driver vehicle that also functions as something very practical, that can handle the winters, that can handle what I needed to do for filming, made the truck a very good decision. Now, in terms of the sports cars that I want, I'm all over the place now. Uh, maybe I'll get something that needs me to get a trailer so I can use the towing capacity of a truck. And then we can make some people on the internet shut up regarding, oh, you're never going to use a truck like a truck. Whatever. Um, manual. I might get something more exotic. 
uh, which would require me to free up some money. So maybe like a manual R8 again, uh, or I could get something cheaper. I looked at Shelby GT350s, I looked at M3s, E92 M3s, that naturally aspirated V8, looked at manual B8.5 S4s. I've thought about AMG GTS, I've thought about more exotic. Do I want a McLaren? Do I want uh, a newer R8? Do I want a Ferrari? I don't know. I'm kind of in the air, but getting something that just frees up my ability to have these options presented to me. I could do a build, I could do some other creative things with it. But there are very, very few downsides to having a truck. One is the size, because parking spaces are really tiny. I don't know why parking spaces seem so small all of a sudden. This thing is much longer. This is not even like a full-size one. I'll have a, I'll have a bigger truck soon that I am spending a week with. It'll be a 2500 HD Silverado, um, so we'll see how that is. But the other thing, fuel economy. But but fuel economy. I saw somebody comments like, oh, it's not more practical because you spend more on fuel. I have a 33-gallon fuel tank on this thing. Luckily, gas is cheap right now, so 33 gallons is not end of the world to fill up. But I can run this on regular 87 octane. I don't need to put premium 93 in this RAM, which means that is a significant savings at the pump, whereas the RS7 got maybe two or three MPG better on average. This thing was probably average 15. RS7 is averaging 18, but the cost of premium was a little bit more. So in that case, net net, it's not a huge deal. I'm pretty happy with it. So with that, let's show you guys some of the other details of the truck. I completely forgot to do the more in-depth walk around. This is the Tricoat Pearl, which in the setting sun, the paint, I washed it today. Oh, washing this truck took so long. The sur it has like twice the surface area of the RS7. So I was scrubbing away for quite a while. But the Tricoat Pearl looks really nice. It's upgraded paint, not just the regular base white. Has some flake in it. Let's see if I can show you on camera real quick. I, I think this paint looks really good. And then I got the night edition. So blacked out 22 inch wheels, the black side steps. That was an option to power running boards. We've got the blacked out badges there too. The blacked out front grille. Same thing on the hood. These are not functional, but they are black. Um, same thing with this. I think they call it like the sport hood or something. Hemi 5.7 liter engine, but the night edition brings everything blacked out on the Tricoat Pearl paint, which looks really good. Other important things that I really like that I option in, power running boards, I think they're pretty cool. Makes it easy to get in, especially if you have shorter friends. The capacity here, we've got USB regular, USB-C, aux, wireless charging for my iPhone, another phone port here that I just plug my Android into. The giant touchscreen, which you can see, <laughs> see a couple of fingerprints on it right now, but I can split screen it. Actually, let me just go show you guys. I'll turn it on. Space in the back is massively practical. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on the seats right now, but these will rotate up <laughs> with more storage below, yeah, like down there. Nice flat load floor. You can put a lot of stuff in there. I mean, it's got more power ports and uh, heated seats in the back. Have the folding tonneau cover so this will fold out and it clips in if i need to get underneath there but it'll keep the the bed clean and kind of locked away got the uh bed utility package so the step here helps me get in it's a bit better liner in here i've got some lights and the rails i can tie stuff down so another idea i possibly have is putting some sort of tripod or slider type of thing in the back that holds a camera a dslr with the bed open and uh, have it like attached with some sort of structure or bungee cords or straps to these side um, mounts and use that for rolling shots. So imagine we're in the car behind it, we're following the truck behind there, getting the cool cinematic shots. A lot of ideas are rolling around in my head on how to do this. And see, we could split screen and I have a car plate on the top running Spotify and then I have my climate control on the bottom. I can select what I want down here. Let's just say I want, uh, why would I want two media cars? No. Yeah, Sirius and Spotify at the same time. I can have navigation running, all sorts of stuff there. Uh, the main media screen, surround cameras. It's pretty awesome. It's a truck. It's extremely practical. It has all the utility. It has all the luxury and tech features that I actually want. I've really enjoyed driving it. Uh, on the freeway, I mean, it cruises along fine, drinking gas like crazy. Other than that, really excited to see what this allows me to do in terms of YouTube videos. Now you guys know kind of the top five reasons why I chose it. Comment below, discuss. I'd be happy to answer more questions why I ended up going with this. And then it'll also allow me to get something else, which I promise you guys, I am promising right now on video for YouTube on the internet, which obviously is a binding agreement, that I am going to get something cool, sporty. 
Uh, whether it's more exotic, whether it's a variety of multiple vehicles, I don't know yet, but that is my goal. And I'm very, very excited for that. So hope you guys enjoyed this walk around with my truck. I shot some nice cinematic exterior shots, did some B-roll testing for some rolling shots, and it did not go quite as I expected it, but I will face the challenge and find a new way to improve that even more. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below what you think of the truck and what you think I should get next. Thanks for watching.